Setting a variable equal to another variable is something that you'll do many, many times when writing code. In most scenarios, your intent would be to initialize a new variable with the value of another, which is basically copying. However, if not done correctly, this could lead to some weird behavior for the uninitiated and likely be the root cause of some of the hardest bugs to find down the road, such as having the modifications of the copied variable also affect the original variable. In this video, we'll discuss the three ways in which we can copy a variable's value into another variable, understanding exactly what each of these methods do at a fundamental level and ultimately giving you the confidence to write professional grade Python code. Let's start off with the first method, which is what you're probably using every time you want to copy a variable, and that is using the equal sign. I mean, you always set one variable equal to another variable, like that, when writing code, and you never seem to have any issues with that, right? Uh, right? Well, using the equal sign can be confusing because Python treats objects differently depending on whether they are mutable or immutable objects. I actually uploaded a video detailing the differences between these two types of objects, but for now, let's just be aware of their existence without going into too much detail. When we are dealing with immutable objects such as strings, integers, or any of the other types shown here, the equal sign will always suffice to create a completely independent copy, and the other two methods I will go over next won't be necessary at all. Here we can see how setting a's value to 5, then setting b equal to a, incrementing b's value by 1 will only affect the value of b, which will now be 6, and a will remain equal to 5, which is what most people expect from this code anyways. Now when we are dealing with mutable objects such as lists, dictionaries, or sets, the equal sign starts playing tricks on you. Here we'll set a's value to the list 1, 2, 3. Then we'll set b equal to a just as we've done before. Modifying the first element of b and setting it equal to 9 successfully modifies the content of this list as we can see in the sprint. What many people will miss out here however is that if we print a, here you go, a's value has been also affected by this modification. Let's take a look at why this happens at a lower level. In my previous video, understanding what is a variable in Python, mutable versus immutable, I explained that whenever a new variable is defined, Python will search for available space in memory, create and save the new object there, and then store the address of this object within the variable in our code. I highly recommend you watch this video right after this one to get the full picture, but for now let's keep our focus on the copying topic in Python. So here we'll have our variable a pointing to this list object created in memory. When we set a variable equal to another variable like we've done here, this will lead to having the new variable pointing to the same thing the first variable is pointing to. Meaning that here, both a and b will be pointing to the same object in memory. This can be verified in code by using the id function. ID is a function that takes as input a variable and returns the variable's identity, which is basically the memory address it points to. And here we can see how both A and B have the same ID, thus pointing to the same address in memory. Given that information, it comes as no surprise that modifications to B will also affect the value of A, as we're basically modifying the same thing both variables are pointing to. And to be more precise in my animations here, lists in Python don't actually contain objects as I'm showing them to you right now. Lists elements are actually pointers to the objects at each index. So here we'll have three pointers within this list pointing to the actual elements. And the modification of the first element actually modifies the first pointer such that it now points to the new value 9. A modification once again shared between both A and B. Now that this is cleared up, let's move on to the next method we can use to copy a mutable object in Python, and that is shallow copying. This can be done in two ways for lists, either by using the copy method of lists, like so, or by importing the built-in copy module and using its copy function, like this. Both approaches here are equivalent and will perform what we call a shallow copy. Let's take a look at the memory and understand what this line of code actually does. This copy method will tell Python that we don't want B to simply point to the same object A is pointing to, we actually want B to point to a copy of the thing A is pointing to. Here A is pointing to this list object containing these three pointers, so we will create in memory a copy of this list, meaning we will create copies of its pointers which will naturally still be pointing to the same objects. Notice how we won't copy the actual integer objects, we will just copy the list object. And finally, we'll store within B the address of this newly created object in memory. 
Now, when it comes time to modify the first element in the list B, what will happen is that we'll first create the new value 9 in memory, and then the first element of B, meaning this specific pointer, which is unique to B and has nothing to do with A, will no longer point to the value 1, but rather to the value 9. And as we can see, this modification doesn't affect at all the elements of the list A. So now with the current code, when we print the values of both A and B, we can see how B's value got updated accordingly, whereas A value remained unchanged. Also, if we print the IDs of both A and B, we can verify that these variables are pointing to different objects in memory. That's awesome! So using copy helped us actually create a copy of an object in memory and avoid having modifications to B also affecting A's value. That being said, there's still one last scenario we need to take a look at and be very cautious about it. And that is having nested lists. In this example, let's group the values 2 and 3 within a nested list in A. So the first element of A would be this integer 1, and the second element would be this list containing the integers 2 and 3. Let's keep B equal to A.copy and keep on modifying the first element of B to 9. Printing the values of A and B shows us that this modification only affected B. That's great. Now, instead of modifying the first element in B, let's modify the first element within the nested list. So this value 2 right here. So to access that, we'll write B of 1 of 0 and now set that equal to 9. If I run my code, what would you guess would happen here? If I had asked you this question at the start of the video, you might have answered that this change would only affect B. But now you're thinking to yourself, if this was the case, he would have ended the video like two minutes ago. So something weird is about to happen, right? Could it be that A will also be affected? But why? Well, let me appease your curiosity and print the values of A and B. And as you can see, A's value has in fact been affected by this modification. Why is that? Well, because of the word shallow and shallow copy. Let's go back to the memory and visualize the steps Python takes when we run this code. First, let's create our list in memory. This time, however, our second element is itself a list, so it will be created like so, containing pointers to its own elements 2 and 3. When we set b equal to a.copy, as explained earlier, Python will create a copy of the object a is pointing to. So in this case, we'll create a copy of this list, which will contain copies of these pointers that once again point to the same objects in memory. And b will contain the address of this newly created list. Notice how last time and this time, we didn't create copies of the actual element objects. We only created a copy of the first level of the copied object and nothing deeper than that. That's exactly why this method of copying is called shallow copy. For those unfamiliar with this term in English, shallow means of little depth. So now when it comes time to modify b of 1 of 0, what we will be actually modifying is this specific pointer right here, which as you can see, is nested within a common object both a and b are still pointing to. So here we'll create the new value 9 in memory, and now this pointer will point to it, so we effectively modified something shared between a and b. And that's exactly why this modification also affected A's value. So in this case, what's the solution? Well, I'm glad you asked as this is the last method we'll cover in this video, which is deep copy. As its name suggests, using this method will allow us to create deep copies of objects in Python, meaning that the whole structure of the object will be copied, not just the first level object the variable is directly pointing to. So to use deep copy, we'll have to import the copy module and use its deep copy method like so. What this will do is the following. First off, Python will create a copy of the first level list object. After which, all the second level objects, meaning the objects the first level object is pointing to, are also copied. And finally, the third level objects are copied. This will keep on going regardless of how deep your structure is. One important detail to note here is that Python will actually skip copying immutable objects even when using deep copy and that's for two reasons. One, in order to save memory space, and two, because it's unnecessary to copy immutable objects anyways. Because even if two pointers are pointing to it, modifications won't affect other variables. If you watched my previous video on mutability, you should understand exactly why that is. If not, once again, I encourage you to watch it after this video. So here we'll end up having a completely independent copy of the overall structure that has absolutely nothing to do with the original data. And now you can imagine that any modifications to B will never affect A in any way.
So when setting b of 1 of 0 equal to 9, we will actually be modifying this specific pointer right here, which is a pointer unique within b's structure, and its modification won't affect a's value. So an integer object with the value 9 will be created, and this pointer will now point to it. Let's verify that in code by printing both a and b's values, and we can see how a remained unaffected by this modification to b. And if we want to go a little deeper in the details, we can verify how a of 1 and b of 1 have different IDs, confirming that in fact this inner list has been copied in memory. Also, printing ID of a of 0 and b of 0, for example, will show us that both share the same ID, confirming my statement that Python won't copy immutable objects such as integers even when deep copying. Okay, so let's recap everything we went over in this video, but before I do that, I want to really applaud you for making it this far in the video. These topics are by no means beginner level, but are definitely fundamental to understanding and mastering Python. So good job for sticking around. Going back to the recap, we have three methods at our disposal to copy variables in Python. The equal sign will always be enough whenever you're exclusively working with immutable objects, meaning when dealing with integers, strings, or tuples. Be careful, however, when using tuples that contain mutable objects such as nested lists. In this scenario, the equal sign will not be enough to create an actual independent copy. The copy, or technically shallow copy method, will serve you well whenever you're dealing with flat mutable structures, such as the list that exclusively contains integers and doesn't contain any nested lists. Finally, when dealing with nested structures such as lists containing lists, dictionaries containing lists as values, and so on, using deep copy should be your go-to approach in order to guarantee a completely new and deep copy of the overall structure. That's it for this video, I hope you learned some new and insightful ideas throughout my explanations. This is a topic I'm very passionate about and I can't enumerate the number of times this understanding helped me solve some crazy bugs. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Subscribe to the channel as this would really help me out in my journey. And as always, don't forget to like if you want to learn even more Python.